Parental discretion is advised. What's up, guys? This week on the Wrestling Mayhem Show, we get into all the different breeds of wrestling fans. We've got more interviews than you can shake a stick at. TNA's for sale. Are we going to buy it? And seeing his damn belt still spinning around his waist. I can ship at a rhymes of what comes out of his Wrestling Mayhem Show. Stick around. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show 393, ready to rock your world and the world of professional wrestling. I am Sorgatron here in the studio in Pittsburgh, PA, Mayhem Studios. Also joining me from uh, far across this fine city, a couple bridges, maybe a tunnel or two, Papa Lunchbox. How you doing? I, I am underwater, underground, and I am ready to go. <laughs> Fucking make mayhem. Awesome. Also from San Antonio, Texas, uh, where they kick bitches in the face. Amen. Hello. I don't do that. <laughs> Heads that, up. That's what you're going to school <laughs> to learn to do. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. But yeah, yeah, it's Mayhem Show Night. Hi, guys. All right. Uh, again, this is the show. We're fans. We love talking about wrestling. We like having fun with wrestling. We like having fun sometimes with wrestlers. Uh, as we will have a little bit, thanks to Riz, we have a couple more interviews from uh, the great IWC Retro Reunion a couple weeks ago. And I understand something very, very special. See, it's going to be a very action-packed uh, indie minute, uh, thanks to some of those uh, fan sent in as well. So let's start the show. Wait, first, you need to find out where the show is, how to get to the show, all that kind of fun stuff. Um, good times. No, here's that. You can contact us at good times at wrestling mayhem show dot com or oh, drop us a line four one two two zero six WMS zero. But you can find all this stuff and all this great stuff, including uh, this show, the wrap ups we do uh, with the Google Hangouts, all that kind of stuff at wrestling mayhem show dot com. And you can find this show on iTunes, on Stitcher, on YouTube, on your Roku box, Roku box via the Blip TV app. All those kinds of places uh, to enjoy your mayhem. So now let's start the show the only way we know how with the fan mail. Uh, first of all, we got one from uh, Dustin. Is there one of you guys want to cover this one? I'll cover the Dustin mail. I think I did it last week. So mm-hmm. let's keep. I'll be consistent with it. Let's be traditional. Yes. Uh, dear Mayhemians. Yes. I think. Hello. I think many in the realm of the internet wrestling fandom have a misconception as to the usage of terminology in regards to any wrestling show they watch. I'll show you what I mean with the following. <clears throat> Damien Zanow cashed in his contract and was buried by a guy who can't work. Cena only has his five moves of doom and never lets talent go over on him. WWE Creative booked Sandow so poorly that he will never be a draw. This is a revised version of the poorly written comments on YouTube and dirt sheets filled with grammatical errors and idi- idi- oh, geez. Idiotic, idiotically regurgitated statements. It seemed to me that so many cling to the idea of being an insider based off reading dirt sheet info, yet internet fans take these posts as the final word. Ironically, they don't realize that they are sounding more like someone who is further out of the loop than the casual fan. Hmm. You know, I, and that's the thing. And, and anytime you're having a conversation, anytime I come run into like a fan or somebody uh, at a show and they're talking about wrestling, um, and, and we got, I mean, we're completely guilty of this too. We say getting buried. We say, we say this, we say watching the product, you know, we kind of make fun of it, uh, when people, well, don't I, watch I, the I mean, product. sometimes they're, sometimes those are proper terms. They're proper terms, but they are definitely insider terms. I think, and, and but unfortunately, I, but I and, think, and it's bleeding through, it's people, go ahead. There are terms that get, oh, some of the terms like buried and, and, you know, not putting people over, get overused at yes. times. Yes. Um, and, and I do want to make a point, uh, uh, at the on the recent uh, best and worst of Raw by Brandon Stroud, he mentions about the whole how the fact that the internet wrestling community or like internet wrestling fans shouldn't be a term in general because everyone's on the internet. Yes, like it really it's not to me it's not you can't lump it into a group. Those are just people that want to be know it alls and want to and think they know every intricacy of what goes on. 
and that and that's the thing because the the dirt sheets give the illusion that the uh, curtain's been raised the entire way. Um, right. The curtain, you know, everybody's in on it. Everybody wants to talk like they know what they're doing. Uh, everybody's, you know, thanks to everybody's uh, tell-all books about the wrestling industry, we all know the lingo carny speak that is the wrestling industry. Uh, we know what kayfabe means, and hey, there's kayfabe news fun sites uh, that, that that lampoon the idea. Um, there's, uh, and I think, and that's why, like, I, sometimes I want to kind of step back and say, what, really, we're going to say product? Really, we're going to say he's buried? Really, we're going to say, uh, I mean, everybody yeah. armchair quarterbacks how people are booked uh with one of the big questions especially it's going to come up here later with like you know how sam Dell, how was sand out treated in that match you know uh, and that's the thing i i think i think wrestling is so subjective yes to the point where that's the, like the whole armchair booking mm. and that whole sort of like well this was wrong because of this like that's not possible, really. In, in the long run, it's so subjective. In the long run, who are we to second guess what WWE does because they're making money, or anyone? You know, and, and, in the long run, you know, this is the, this this all bothered me for a very long time. Like we as wrestling fans, every rest every set of wrestling fan uh, makes fun of the other set of wrestling fan for being ridiculous, yeah. and every has a problem with everybody else. And it, this, this is this kind of thing you only see in professional wrestling. You don't see this in uh, other sports. You don't see uh, people who like action movies making fun of people who like horror movies. And nobody makes fun of anyone <laughs> for reading like Entertainment Weekly to know what happens right. behind the scenes. Yeah. And 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 you know wrestling is a, it's a combination of sport and a combination of entertainment. So look at something else. People who read Fox News making fun of. Not Fox News. I'm sorry, Fox Sports. Make fun of people who watch ESPN, and nobody mm. says, you know, nobody makes fun of anybody for knowing the same lingo that the quarterbacks use. You know right. what I mean? It, it, wrestling and, and is and so he, unique in this aspect, and I can't. And it, it, it bothers me. It. I don't know. It just. It just. The separation in wrestling fans bothers me. A fucking football fans are football fans, and that's it. They're fan. They're, they like their teams, and that's where the separation comes in. With wrestling fans, we all like wrestling, but we all hate each other. And yeah. it's weird. And I, and I think weird. that there's, and it's strange that there's people out there that can be like, "Well, I'm more refined of a wrestling fan than you are," or "I prefer things that are better than what you prefer." Guys, like we all like wrestling. We all like the thing that is super lame to like. <laughs> Let's be honest. Let's be honest. We none Let's of us start. are the cool kid in school for no. talking about this wherever. Well, I mean, how many comments? People, how many comments are 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 get out of your basement and stop talking about wrestling? Oh shit, I'm in my basement. Um, you know, I, but, I, yeah, I, but people are like, people are always like, well, I'm a cool wrestling fan. It's like none of us are cool. None of us are cool <laughs> whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. And a I, lot of people need to realize that if you take us into the outside world, no one thinks we're cool. <laughs> like it's very, the whole thing is very fascinating to me like i really want to write like a book about all the different sub sects of wrestling fans and how they all hate each other you know mm. it, 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 it it's similar i don't want to get too far into it but jugglos are the same way you know there are i don't like mm. the jugglos that go to hot topic and they just like it because they get the cd now you know versus i'm a true juggler i like them before they're on a label you know guess what you all throw poop no, we don't throw. No, <laughs> no we no, throw no, Fago. No, no. Get it right, I'm, dick. I'm kidding, son. I'm kidding. No, that was my other band that did that through poop. Um, <laughs> anyways, um, <laughs> crap. Uh, it doesn't matter. Available on iTunes, by the way. Um, Juggle community, I love you, by the way. So. <laughs> this, all, this all got. This all went off the rails. No, definitely, definitely. We didn't even get to the questions. Give me a question. Yes, we got questions. It's a good discussion. It is a good discussion. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Uh, questions. Number one. I'm a big mark for a great-looking spot. See what I did there? <laughs> and I got one at the pay-per-view with Cody Rhodes superplexing Seth Rollins to the outside. What is one spot that, when you see it, makes you say, wow? Hmm. That's a good question. Easy. Canadian Destroyer. Um, well, uh, G-Raver pulled one off at the last RWA show. And I think it's the first time uh, Chachi had seen one in person. And not to mention, it flipped right towards him. 
at ringside. Mm. And yeah, I, I heard him on the headset going, holy shit. It's still a great looking thing. Uh, when they pull it off and pull it off, well, it looks like you killed the guy. Um, and and it just, it just, you know, it's just like, wow. Wow, that happened. You know, it, you, you feel like yeah. you saw something special. So, um, I don't know a particular spot because it's not something, this one, it's not something you set up necessarily. But, like, any, like, big running strike, like, that just, you know, sort of ends, like, a series of, of, uh, of uh, offense. Okay. I love that. Like, the, like for example, like, uh, in WWE, for example, Daniel Bryan's knee. Yeah. Like, I think that's really a big, like, impactful, like, ender, an impactful moment. Um, and there's a lot out there. So that, that that's one I would think of. It's not necessarily a spot, but that's the closest thing. What about you, LB? Um, I don't know. That's a really hard one. I'm, I, I am always impressed when people just fling themselves over the top rope to the outside, any kind of plancha, any kind of any of that. Um, but I'm also a big fan of a good, solid, well-executed, loud kick. <laughs> uh, well, remember, was that us that always yelled, kick him in the back? <laughs> like, it was, I forget who started that amongst our crew there. A few people do it. But, um, yeah, and usually when they pull it off, you can get that big thud, and you're like, ooh. Mm -hmm. so, awesome. Next question. Next question. Number two. Is it just me, or did anyone else here filling for Sorg before we carry on the pay-per-view during the filler matches for the pay-per-view? I put it on mute and could hear LB's voice filling in time until a match I wanted to watch started. Hey, uh, yeah, there was a lot of filler, I think, on the pay-per-view. I mean, we'll, we'll probably get into that a bit later, but... I didn't notice so much, but I guess maybe. Just the, match, just the matches that were like, oh, okay. Like, it was sort of like, this is a match we'd see on Raw. And yeah. not, 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 I mean, mostly they were good matches, but it was like, okay. Yeah, you know. yeah, I, there was, like, we built these ones and, and we just kind of stuck this in here. Which is, I mean, it used to be half the pay-per-view was that, so I can't really get mad about that anymore. Um, it really just needs to be timed out, and that needs to be in there. Not a problem anymore. Mm. I don't think so. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. watch an old WrestleMania. How many filler <laughs> matches are in there? Let's be honest. Yeah. So Most of them. Uh, <laughs> good majority. Uh, number three. So the idea has been brought up that AJ Styles will be defending the World Heavyweight Championship in other companies. Over course... Over course, they have ties with AAA and Wrestle One, but what is one indie promotion that you would like to see him defend in, and and who would you like to see him wrestle while there? Hmm. Uh, IWC in December against Colt Cabana. <laughs> I was gonna say I can, can be selfish about this. <laughs> I would like to see AJ Styles wrestle at Inspire Pro Wrestling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's go with the selfish spots here. Yeah, exactly. Um. Hey, AJ Styles been on IWC a lot before, including when he was in TNA, pretty big. And I don't know if he's if they're, he's taking like for real indie bookings like this. I'd like to see it. I don't know if Ring of Honor would work. Uh, the closest thing I would like to see him in maybe like a PWG with someone like say a, uh, Adam Cole or even like a Kevin Steen maybe could be fun. So yeah, there's ways to go with it. What about you, LB? Uh, fuck, I came up with a really good one earlier today, and I forgot it. Shit, I, I don't remember. I, I don't know. I, I would like to see him in, in one of the Mexican promotions. I think that would be interesting, watching him wrestle, uh, wrestle Luchadors or Mystico 2 or something like that. I think, uh, I think that would be good. Mystico 2, Electric Boogaloo. Yeah. <laughs> All of, oh, he no, replied. I remember what it was. I remember what it was. NXT. Yes. <laughs> How? Because that would be just bonkers, just bonkers. If like one week Claudio comes out and he's like, "I'll fight anybody. I've fought everybody all over the world." Not is it Claudio? I meant um, uh, what's his fuck? The other one, Cesaro, Cassius yeah. Ono. Um, oh, yeah. oh. And then AJ Styles comes out and he's like, "TNA title. Let's do this." <laughs> awesome. Uh, uh, he replies. All of your answers in the final question are null and void if they weren't New Japan Pro Wrestling and Okada. The only other acceptable answer would be Tanahashi. 
Sigh. I have a feeling only Eamon will know just how awesome those matches could be. Yeah, I, I could say that. Uh, from the I chat mean, room, uh, like Hicks says, uh, AJ Styles versus ACH in a who can kill themselves in spectacular fashion first match. I'd be down for that. Yep. Absolutely. Um, but AJ yeah, I know Styles I boner. Funny thing. Funny thing, AJ Styles versus Hir- Hiroshi Tanahashi did happen in TNA, and it lasted like seven minutes, and it was a filler on a pay-per-view. Uh, Imagine if they give him 45 minutes in New Japan. Yeah. You know. Uh, he has, with regards, Dustin. Excellent. Now, what else we got here? We got, uh, let me do this one. WS Son of a Guns. If you uh, were all less hairy and I less macho, I would hug you all until their, our bodies started sweating. Except Riz. I don't want to hug Riz. It is I, Zero2K, from the area of Texas, yet not the area that Eamon keeps telling me to watch wrestling shows. So screw you, I will keep watching ACW via digital video discs. Hey, hey, tell me what area... There's, there's, there's like a hundred promotions in Texas. There's got to be one near you. I will find that promotion and tell you about it. You will research that <laughs> ass. Uh, anyway, my wrestling reviews. Hell in a Cell was good. Raw was bad. Superstars was the shit. What? <laughs> next, yeah, superstar. next topic. I like this guy. He's concise. That he Kurt a... Hawkins Sin Cara match was amazing. Oh, yeah. Next. <laughs> AJ Styles is out TNA. And he will defend his. And we just talked about this uh, in Triple H uh, this Sunday uh, and other places. Actually, we did We did just go over this. Yeah, the, pretty much the same question, but we, yeah. We did bring up like New Japan Pro Wrestling and stuff like that. That's one. I'd like to see that. Uh, they've had a relationship with New Japan in the, in the, in the past. Yeah, and that went super well. Uh, he finishes, it's been nice, that's right, it's been nice sending you this email for I haven't had a chance to listen to the show live. Later's Mayhem, Zero, out. Sent from my HP Elite Book 8570W. What the fuck is that? Wow. Uh, and then a quickie one from 1PAK. LB, you want to oh. you, you get that? No, there's there's one more from Mad Mike, and I'll take that one. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll, I'll take this one then. WS Nation, uh, what in the name of Magnum TA did Damian Sandow, the world's boringest talker, cash in stylish briefcase, only to lose to Super Cena on Raw last night? I wonder Whoa. why the company who gave us Legion of Doom, the Rockers, and the Ultimate Warrior, Bad News Brown, the Rock, and Stone Cold, among countless others, have, have somebody become. What? I don't know. You sort of loses here. Wait, wait, the no, answer no, 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 to a no, no, no. trivial pursuit right question. Right what? I'm sorry. I gotta stop you right there, real quick. He just labeled Damian Sandow the world's boringest talker. Apparently, he doesn't like his style. Company. He highlights the company for creating bad news brown. <laughs> Who the fuck are you? Well, this was a big thing Don't of you contention. Don't ever speak ill of bad news brown. Uh, this was a big thing of contention, though, because uh, it, with the, I put out the question today uh, on on our on our social stuff. Did WWE really drop the ball, Sandow? I reflected on PRK. Um, uh, it was uh, did they drop a ball with Sandell la- last night on Raw, or was he simply not ready to have one of those top two belts in the company? There's a great Bleacher Report uh, that was posted on the Facebook group, I think, by Mister Garza. <laughs> there was a there was a great Bleacher Report. First time anyone's ever said that. <laughs> really, really, I, that was a good Bleach. point. I read about Bleach half of it. They usually right. write way too long. Contradiction in terms. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, but there was a pretty good uh, response to that. Um, you know, first, uh, uh, Jack, Jack on the board says perhaps they didn't drop the ball in terms of storylines, but the execution seems a bit hasty. Uh, it felt like they had to feed someone to Cena to solidify him as being back. It's my personal opinion that they should have, uh, drawn it out longer. And he has more to say with that. Uh, Tony says, uh, if he's not ready, don't remove the briefcase, simply start working on him to get to that point. Well, that's one thing. Is he going to, do they expect him to be ready in the next uh, what nine months? I guess before the next plane the bank. I think that's, that's a question thing, as though. well. That's the thing. I you mentioned about like did WWE drop the ball or was Damian Sandow just not ready? I think both. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Both. He was not ready, obviously. Uh, but he's held that briefcase for three months. Yeah. 
He's got nine more months to defend it. There was I didn't feel like there was any reason to just rush it to, right there. To Charmin, he says, I really like the guy, but I'm a believer that those world titles should only be on the really top tier guys. Thus, I can't argue against him losing. However, I think the match was excellent, and he'll hopefully get a uh, healthy bump for it. And that's the thing. I, I remember there were, there were some tweets I think I saw from maybe Foley and JR um, um, online saying, hey, uh, if you look that match, Sandow did not lose last night. He showed himself. Um, and we always talk about no, I think you need did. to remember, you don't need to win to win. Uh, and, right. and I think for him, that was it was one of those moments for that. Um, so there's that. Uh, so let's know. Pretty, you know, pretty big contention because it really felt like it came out of nowhere um, uh, for that. I, I, real quick, I, uh, Eamon, you're saying uh, I agree with Tonio. He has nine more months to cash in. Why just drop it uh, now because he's not ready now? Exactly. I feel like in nine nine months can change a lot of things. And I feel like if they let it at least go out a little bit longer, they could have seen something develop. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I, I wish they would have held on to it a bit longer. I personally liked the match last night, and I do agree that people always do think that winning immediately means that you're going over. And now we're using those terms that we mentioned in the first email. Um, but, like, winning means that. and But it doesn't. Um, people... Like, people last night were like, oh, well, Randy Orton and John Cena are the champions now. Now everything's going back in time. But really, it's not even a factor of the championships. It's a factor of popularity. It's a factor of who's getting the most buzz. Yeah. And Daniel Bryan still has that. Daniel Bryan had a phenomenal three months. Yeah, he was getting screw jobs, but he was main eventing pay-per-views. Yeah. You know, over guys like John Cena. He may have been over John Cena. Like, people seem to forget that. And they think that, well, because he's not the champion, that means he's not, you know, he's not getting over or whatever. Exactly. Uh, we actually had another comment from actually over on Google+. Plus. Uh, somebody responded to the question. Uh, Hi, Ro Google+. Robert Plus. over there. Hello, Google+. Plus. By the way, we have Google.com slash plus wrestling mayhem show to get over there now just got that today uh but robert says would you still uh would the world title still be considered a top belt because fans these days mainly focus on the wwe belt i contend well it's wwe's fault because they haven't made it a top storyline it's always no. wwe title and whatever cena or punk are not doing with the belt mm -hmm. really in the last like two years right but it's, I agree completely. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we focus on these other ideas, and it's okay to have other things uh, going on. Um, but you know, and a lot I've saw you know, a lot of hashtag too many belts. Uh, uh, you know, even Sunday night. So I don't know. That, uh, we'll see. LB, you got any quick thoughts before we go to the Mad Mike mail? Uh, I agree. Damien Sandow put on a great match um, mm -hmm. with a uh, reserved John Cena. Hmm. Excellent. How about the Mad Mike mail, sir? Yes. <laughs> Greetings, Mayhemers. I humbly apologize to the crew that I will not be around for the Impact Halloween special this week, as I will be doing Halloween-y things. But having checked the spoilers, it doesn't look like anyone is missing much. That said, look forward to another round of hashtag Impact Not Live, probably when I'm drunk and home from the bar. As far as Hell in the Cell goes, I thought it was a pretty good show, apart from HB Photo Shizzle's Magic Legs. And... Paul Heyman trapping himself. The tag team match was amazing, and if the dirt sheets rumors of a four-team match are true, then it will be fantastic. On to Raw, I only have one question. Who is the devil? With the Wyatts attacking Punk and Brian, I have to I have to question who this devil would be. First and most obvious guess is Vince, because he needs an outlet to get back. Second guess would be Trips and Steph, as they brought the devil's favorite demon back into the fold. But how about something a little outside the box? What about Paul Heyman? He did refer to himself as Satan, and, bringing, and him bringing the Wyatts into the Dangerous Alliance would make up for a lack of Curtis Axel and semi-revenge Ryback. And the semi avenge average. Semi average Ryback. Fuck. Well, that's all for me this week. White Alchemist ending transmission. I don't think we can read too much into the who the Wyatts think the devil is, because they also mentioned by name multiple times Sister Abigail. And who was that? No one knows. Yeah. <laughs> no one knows. Even when it's explained, no one knows. Mm-hmm. Awesome. What they explained it? Uh, well, no, I, what I mean by that is Bray cut a promo where he explained the whole Sister Abigail thing. 
And then Michael Cole the next week was like, no, that's his sister Abigail. And it's like, no, Michael Cole, you didn't listen to the promo whatsoever. So no one knows. Uh, uh, apparently I didn't even <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Well, uh, I think that's it for the fan interactions, if I'm not mistaken. None snuck in there, right, guys? Uh, we got one we're going to add on here for the indie minute. Uh, but before that, Riz, of course, like we talked about last week, uh, he was great, great and talked to a lot of the guys uh, at IWC uh, last week. So let's go uh, take a look. We do talk to uh, um, 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 friends of the show, Chess Flexor, in an interesting position, Dalton Castle. Uh, but he also got a chance to catch, catch up with uh, Bobby Fish, the Ring of Honor Tag Team Champion, as well as RJ City happened to be around as well in one of the most interesting and comfortable email or interviews we'll have that and right back with Andy Man. this was retro reunion i'm here with chest flexor right now um how was your uh match tonight stick it by my mouth my match yes. it didn't go as planned i thought i had a strategy but then my other my other stds they screwed it up i'm in the middle of a training class i got a trainee here what was what, what was your strategy going into that against Shane Taylor, by the way? Uh, going in, with the strategy was to win. Oh yeah, that's what I'm teaching. This, that's what I'm teaching this guy here how to win. And he's doing a good job of it, isn't he? Ask him. Put it here. Put the microphone. How how, are, how do you feel right now? Yeah, I feel great. Just what to me a lot. Well, that's what Thank you, Chess Flexor. And one more question before I let you go, and you know. Do, do your training session here. I don't know if we asked you this yet, but wh if you were a vegetable, what vegetable would you be and why? Listen, I'll answer that whenever I come back in studio. Oh. How about you? Hike me. Hike me. Uh, what, uh, what are those gimmicks called? A hot pocket. That's the vegetable. I'd be a hot pocket. Thank you, Chess Flexor. I'll, get, I'll let you get back to your training session. Thank you. Uh, I'm here with R ROH's tag team champion, Bobby Fish. Sounds good, right? That sounds, you that almost sounds want really to say good. it again. The ROH World Tag Team Champion, Bobby Fish. I hope you enjoyed saying that as much as I enjoyed hearing it twice. Oh, it, 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 that was probably the best moment of my life. Nice, right there. nice, nice. Glad, uh, glad I could but help. But of course... Tonight you had John McChesney in the Pick Your Poison match. Yes, sir. And it didn't go quite as well. It didn't. Um, I don't know uh, who the gentleman was that, that came out to ringside. Mm -hmm. uh, apparently John does know, and I don't know. And if we're on Team Big League, uh, the, the, the key right. Right, right, the key word in that uh, sentence was team, right? Right. So a team, generally, uh, all parties are informed. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went into that ring tonight certainly uh, uninformed when it came to the presence of a certain individual. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Certainly not happy. Oh, of course not. So I'm going to lighten the mood, mood up here a little right. bit. So I want to get I want to get your immediate reaction to this. We ask everybody this Do from I, the should top. I, should I be se seated? You might. All right. Uh, but we ask the top of the top and the bottom of the bottom this same question. Okay. If Bobby Fish were a vegetable, what vegetable would Bobby Fish be? Uh, asparagus. And why? Because it makes your piss smell. Oh, yeah, that's a good question. That's a good point. Uh, again, thank you, Mr. ROH World Tag Team Champion Bobby Fish. Uh, again, that, that, that really made my day. Awesome. Uh, and by the way, I really did like that, in, that new uh, entrance music you had. Yes, yes. I like that. It was uh, hand picked. Hand picked. I like that. Are we huh. starting? I'm going to put a shirt on. Yeah, okay. Let's, let's, let's. Let, I want to hear what the questions okay. that you have. Well,. Rizzo, like Ratso Rizzo? Like, Ratso, uh, Ratso Rizzo could be one of them. Uh, the rapper, like you said, or right. the Grease reference. Mm -hmm. uh, Wait, Riz the, like the Ratso Muppet? Rizzo, the Midnight the Cowboy. Yes, the well, Muppet. I'm walking yeah. here, everybody's <laughs> talking at me. So, my, one, my question... Are you falling asleep? Your eyes keep closing. You bored yourself. Are you okay? And I need, I need a nap. The, view the viewers are asleep, too. They do. They, they are. Uh, Gotta but, wake them up. <laughs> You want to wake him up with the moon? You can hey, if you want. If you're watching this, get a job, go be a father, go be a husband. What are you doing? This is the rock bottom of YouTube viewing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
please. Do anything. Any, isn't there paperwork? Clean your room. Something. Something, something a little something. constructive. Something. Go ahead. So. Ross. Riz, but anyways. You, You're awfully sweaty, Riz. I am. You're it's, it's a hot. It's a hot gym. You're a hot guy. I know. Don't let anybody tell I you know. different. I should really, you know, mm -hmm. no, start. No, no. no, keep it on. Not oh. with the questions, question All man. Right. <clears throat> so. You love Neil Diamond? Yes. Love she got you. the way to move McCherry. Yes. She got the way to move McCherry. She got the way to move me. All right. Bum, 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 bum. Sorry, questions? I think that w that's all we have. Right? Those are easy. Nailed it. No, I want to hear the question. Yeah, all right, all right, all right, all right. So, serious question. I'm going down here now. Okay. I'm coming back well, up oh, here. I didn't want uh, you to follow. No. Those are my spe those are special. I'll be down here. here we go. What's I'll be down here. What's your question? My question oh. is, you guys, well, Dalton here. What had are you his, doing down there? I don't know. <laughs> Why won't you look me in the eye? Look at me when you talk to me. Look at me. Up here, look at me, look at him. Look at, look at me while you're looking at him. You do, he's doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing yeah. it. I, I, I've, I have, I have ahead, training ask, right ask now. Ask the question. Okay. Dalton. Oh, yes? <laughs> you had a match uh, with Dennis Gregory. Who's that? Oh, the guy. The guy that, guy that you fought. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You know, in, in that match, the, the, there was a ring right you over there. It. We're all okay. caught up. Go ahead. Uh, I was there. I know. I don't even remember this. You didn't? Do you really? have a fast forward button? I don't. I want to skip to the end of this and see how it ends. I bet it's great. Brilliant. It, I'll, I'll be in the corner crying what my eyes out. What is the question? I, just get to it. No this, preamble, just get to the question. This better not be one of those M. Night Shyamalan interviews where like there's a oh. twist at the end. I can't handle that. Maybe, maybe, I have a hot condition. Maybe you're the interviewer. No, the because there's simply nothing we can ask you. Okay. Ask the question. All right. <laughs> so, now yep. you are in a match with Mr. John McChesney. Try some pretzels and mustard. That's what I want you to do. Okay. If I have not heard if one question mark in your some pretzels and mustard. Okay. And my question to you is, how are you going to defeat John McChesney after the RJ, last times? he asked the whole thing. I asked the question. How are you going to defeat him? How are you going to defeat him? Uh, Come on. A lot of people don't know the secret to this. Uh-huh. But I plan to put his shoulder blades what? on the mat. How much? How long? Ah, 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 oh. ah. On one, not two, three, three seconds. Three seconds. Yeah. Three? Maybe four. You can. You never can be careful. Too careful. Well, I mean, you can you can hold him down as long as you want. <laughs> you can hold him down, buddy. I mean, I. I'm just gonna put him down. Good. But that's all I have for you. <laughs> you don't you have any had questions one RJ? Question. You had one freaking question. How are you going to win? This is it the whole time? You're just right. letting your right. ass off right. just to ask. RJ? RJ. Oh, wait, no. How are no. you going to beat John McChesney? I think, you, I think you already answered the question before. So I'm going to ask RJ this. Because we asked, we asked uh, Dalton this before. But what vegetable? Would you be, and why? Uh, <clears throat> red pepper, very underrated hand fruit. It has a handle, you can eat around it. Everybody's eating, oh, cucumbers, tomatoes, comes in a variety of all the peppers, variety of colors, variety of flavors. You can eat around the seed. You ever bite into an apple too much and uh, uh, uh. you bite around the peel and when it's there, you just, you just dump it. You just dump it, eat a pepper. Peppers are delicious. What vegetable are you? Ooh. Oh, I'm you look thinking of something tomato. Tu something tubular. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Actually, I was going to say I was going to say cucumber. Did no, no, nope. no, nope. no. Nope. No, you're wrong. No. Eggplant. That's a good question. That's a good one. I, I, I'm going to change my answer to eggplant. Went right over it. Yeah. I know. First yeah. rule of improv: always say no. No. Whatever. Always say that's good. No. All right, let me let's okay. do a little improv here. Ready? All right. Okay. Here's the right. okay. With you ready? You. With ready. you. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, all right. uh, I'm uh, uh, I'm com coming to return this toaster. Nope. No. Hilarious. Did you see that? Perfect. And no script. Perfect. Right? There's no acting, obviously, but there's no script. This is what we call improvisation. Watch this. Watch this. Okay. What was that I just did there? Improv, my friend. Mm -hmm. 
You had no idea. I, I had no idea. My hands there. Off no. The cuff. Off the cuff. Off the cuff. Yeah. That was right perfect. Off. Right there. Right off. You right there. are sweating up a storm. We gotta get I this know. shirt zipped up yeah. so you can keep some of that juiciness inside and marinate. But what if they want to see the juiciness? Mm -mm, mm -mm. No. You don't want to rush these eat things. A, a wet eggplant. Oh. Exactly. Um, well, that's all the time we have on the Ratso Rizzo show. This, of course, is Rizzo. I'm Kanicki. And Sandy D. Mm, saying so we bashful. go together like Rama Lama Lama. Ding a ding ding bop. Thank you, Riz. Uh, for those interviews with uh, folks such as RJ City and Dalton Castle. Uh, if you want to go check out IWC Retro Reunion, that will be available soon on SorgatronMedia.com in the store uh, section. Uh, so go order that. Um, it's time now for the little segment that we like to call the Indie Minute, where we talk about things such as independent wrestling. Uh, there's a couple independent wrestling shows that I think you need to be aware of. First, I want to talk about the one that's most uh, coming up most recently, and that is for Wrestling is Fun. Uh, they have their event Between Green and Yellow uh, in Norristown, Pennsylvania. It should be a really fun event at the Greater Norristown PAL Gymnasium. Uh, so, some of the matches scheduled on the card. Uh, Amasis will go one-on-one -on -one with Max Smashmaster in the main event. Uh, we've got the Special Envoy taking on the uh, uh, Sydney Bacabella's Wrecking Crew. Uh, th the Thunderfrog will be there. Uh, Sony and Thunderfrog, Juan Francisco, the Throwbacks, Los Ice Creams, tons of Wrestling Is talent. Uh, those are always fun shows for Wrestling Is. Wrestling Is in general, but definitely Wrestling Is fun. Uh, if you want to check them out, you can go to WrestlingIsFun.org uh, to get tickets for that event on November 3rd. Uh, go support them. Go check them out. And yeah, if you're in the PA area, go check out some Wrestling Is Fun. Fun. Also, an uh, event that I want to alert you to uh, that's coming up in a couple weeks, uh, but it's a big event that I definitely think uh, people need to be in the know about. November 17th, Beyond Wrestling is bringing back a tradition that they had uh, they, they started a couple years ago uh, in the Tournament for Tomorrow, and they're holding their second Tournament for Tomorrow uh, event uh, for uh, the company. Uh, it's really a tournament that sort of showcases the young, up-and-coming talent, the talent that's not necessarily discovered yet, uh, mixed with some of the best talent that's in uh, Beyond Wrestling. Uh, so it, it's going to be, a, looks like a really good card. It's uh, going to be held in Providence, Rhode Island. Um, a lot of names uh, from uh, Beyond Wrestling. Uh, also, it's going to be a mixed tournament. So also we have a lot of names from WSU that will be competing. Um, a lot of really good lineup of people. And then you also got uh, matches like a 60-minute Iron Man match between Eddie Edwards and Biff Busick. A uh, grudge match between the Ring of Honor star Tommaso Ciampa and Chris Dickinson. Michael Elgin will be there. Um, it looks like a really set card. I like that Beyond Wrestling is producing a lot of great, like, crazy. to the public um, uh, events uh, that are really, like, awesome super shows. Uh, I encourage you to check out Beyond Wrestling because they're really breaking some walls down and they're doing some really great stuff in the world of independent professional wrestling. If you want to check them out and get tickets, you can go to lookmanofans.com uh, and you can get some of their past DVDs, their entire library. Also check out their YouTube channel, Beyond Wrestling, because they always are uploading matches and clips and all, all kinds of cool stuff. So definitely go check them out at Beyond Wrestling. And uh, that's it's sort of a light week here in indie wrestling, but I wanted to bring up uh, let's have some fun here and let's have some interactiveness. Uh, I wanted to pose a bit of a discussion question uh, to the panel here tonight and also to pretty, uh, anyone listening at home or anyone in the chat room. Um, the topic gets thrown around about independent wrestling of like sort of the differentials between what makes a good independent wrestling show and what makes a bad independent wrestling show. Um, there's, there's always, you know, some, you know, there's definitely defining factors. So I want to pose a question to everyone. Uh, what do you look for in an independent wrestling promotion? Uh, Sorg, if, do you have anything you think of when that question comes um, to mind? I, I go back to like re really got us into, you know, our local promotion with IWC was uh, it, it brought like, I think it, it's a pretty good formula and I see it repeated with a lot of, uh, promotions, I think you can say so with like you know like a Beyond Wrestling and that kind of card where we see uh, big names, um, not like big big names, but like you know for instance, I know uh, uh, when we went to our first shows, Low Key was the big name, right? Uh, uh, somebody that we've heard about a lot on the Indies 
or, or at the time the Samoa Joes and the uh, and the AJ Styles that were on you know lesser things. TNA was barely anything. Ring of Honor, uh, but this here see those kind of faces your ACHs. Uh, but then uh, the promotion wins when you can stick around for the talent. Uh, mm-hmm. And I think that's where, like, IWC always always kind of wins. Like, uh, they're going to have, like, Michael Elgin's going to be on this next show in Clearfield. Um, but then it's the rest of it is the main roster, and I think the main roster really kind of sticks out for itself. Now, I've seen right. promotions where they really do ride the big names, and I don't think see anything special out of the main roster. Uh, Pro Wrestling Syndicate, I think, is a prime example of this. They are big on the big names but from what i saw from their like you know internal talent i didn't see anything special uh out of the show that i watched um and maybe it's because it was a special wrestling man or yeah wrestling wrestlemania weekend kind of thing uh but i don't see why would i stick around other than to see what legend shows up next month or something like that right right um uh, versus and then there's others I think it's hard to get into promotions that don't have that first thing to get you in the door. Like, oh, I remember that guy from TV or something like that. Um, but they win because they are, you know, the only ones in town. They're the ones that, hey, there's wrestling right down the road. Let's go and we'll go every month. And I think that works really well for those promotions. But, you know, it's for me, it's big name gets you in the door. The talent kind of keeps it. Right. How about you, LB? You have anything in mind? I have to agree with Sorg. Um, I, I, I like when I say, but when I say a big name, it doesn't necessarily have to be like someone from TV. Just, just someone. It has to be someone that I know I like. It can be a, an indie wrestler that I'm just a fan of, like yeah. like ACH. Like ACH is going to draw me to a show. And then, um, but and then layered with that, I also really enjoy. Um, a bunch of unknown wrestlers, people who I've never heard of and have the opportunity to win me over as a fan. Um, and this isn't necessarily a matter of, you know, this makes a good indie promotion, but I do like a good gimmick. I like a good gimmick match, you know, a hardcore mm-hmm. match or a tournament or something like that. I'm on board for that kind of shit. Cool. Uh, I, I think the one thing that sort of uh, I sort of stuck with, and I don't think you get this a lot on the East Coast, um, because East Coast, you have a lot of people that are producing content because when they produce content, it, it forces them almost to be consistent. Um, th- I think the thing that differentiates a good indie wrestling promotion and a bad one is the ones that develop storylines consistently throughout. Um, I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but I've been to Texas independent wrestling shows before where – um, you go to a Texas independent wrestling show for the first time, or I should say any independent wrestling show for the first time, and you see the card and you see the stories that, um, and you know, the heel face dynamic and, you know, you get into it and you're like, okay, this is cool. I want to follow these guys. And then you go back to the show that they have the next month and stuff's completely different. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like the heel is now suddenly the guy that you're supposed to cheer and now these guys who are feuding are now teaming, and they people who don't make a an, an, uh, a point to explain mm-hmm. and a point to you know sort of tell their you know to portray a story. Um, for example, when I started going to ACW shows, that was the first show I ever went to where they developed consistent storylines across the board, and everyone was. Uh, unless they had turned or done, or they were very emphatic of you know a change in personality, uh, they were consistent throughout, and that was like a shock to me. I was like, wow, they, they're actually you know, you know, developing this stuff, and it forces you to come to every show, yeah, because you want to see the story play out, you want to see these characters play out, and I think that's one something that you know I think the the companies that aren't as good sort of miss out on. I think I think you're right, and I know both the companies that we work here lo- with here locally, both RWA and IWC, are very good about that. Um, something happens to hook you into the next show. Somebody comes out at the end, or there's a, or or somebody 
set, you know, challenges somebody at the end or, or, you know, something happens with the match that leads into, uh, uh, you know, for his IWC, it was a uh, uh, point picker poison stuff and, and, and determining if the guy got a title shot and what the stipulation would be, would be. that draws you right into the next show. Uh, everything right. at Clearfield is going to be set up for winner takes all. And even if you can't make the hour and a half trip down to, to Pittsburgh for the next show from Clearfield, uh, you can get the DVD. You know, either way, it hooks you into want to see. Whoa, what is the next? What Cole Cabana, Cole Cabana is going to be here? Whoa, that's crazy. Whoa, these guys are finally going to get out. Like you know, RJ City. We just had in that interview has been uh, having a long-standing thing that started with interviews, very TV style. Even though they're not on TV, with these interviews thing uh, uh, with uh, Shima Zion, uh, Zion, uh, you know, from you know, stemming from the whole. Uh, uh, when, when, when Shima was, was hurt and, and, you know, like, uh, you know, crowdfunding money, you know, and, and it built all out of that. Uh, RWA does, uh, RWA has got an interesting format where it, and IWC does this more, I think so now, or I, I, I might've mixed those. IWC does this more, I think so now that they have a talk show kind of segment. Um, but I know RWA like has a, always seems to have that like beginning of raw segment that kind of sets up the story for the night and and, a lot yeah, of- and I know some people that don't like that it shows I actually don't mind that at all because as I long think- as it keeps short as long as it keeps short it, it, I yeah. know I know for a while uh, and they again it being better about this it used to be always the same thing of this guy come, the heel leader comes out baby face comes out they they do whatever it says up the main event and then that's it um yeah. that's you know, it, and, and, but, but the, and there's but, obviously factors. I won't. I won't name names. I was once at a show that started 30 minutes later than it was supposed to, and then they had an in-ring segment that lasted like 10 minutes. Yeah, and that yeah. sort of pisses you off because yeah, you're that, like, that's okay. Totally, and if you're not like, like, is it somebody specifically like setting up for TV or DVD or something at that point? Yeah, yeah, they no, are. Absolutely. They are. So I mean, they they do have things they have to get through to get their point and story across for the overall. Uh, but still, um, but. But but that but it works there because it, a lot of times the card changes, especially as we saw at the last IWC and RW shows. Uh, there were a lot of cancellations, I think, on both cases, mm-hmm. and so a lot of stuff needed to be explained and reset up for whatever they did online in advance. Right. Because you got to think, in both cases, those shows get filmed and if not edited uh, within like maybe a week after those shows. Well, film that the shows and and put together out a week after show, a lot can change. Right. Yeah. Um, so in those cases, I think it's good. And I think there's enough going on to set up if this is your first time they allude to, hey, this, this and this was happening or this happens. And it keeps the new people caught up too. Um, in in comic books, uh, I know like part of the Marvel method and correct me if I'm wrong here or, or miss, miss say this, LB. Um, a lot of times when they're talking about writers of comic books, like this idea of it may, there's always somebody that it's going to be their first time picking up a book. There's always somebody that's going to be their mm. first time watching Raw. That's why we get so many freaking replays There's they're in packages and stuff. It might be the first time at an indie show, so we're going to be like, why the hell do I like this guy or, or this or that or the other thing? Um, mm. I think that all kind of comes together. And that thinking and that broader thinking, I think, is what makes for uh, uh, our, you know, your anarchies or inspires or IWCs or RWAs or whatever you, you got there locally work and keep people mm. coming back. Yeah, I agree completely. Yeah, that's that's about right. Although, um, it's I, I I look at it like uh, like when there's going to be an election, um, when the uh, they do all the, the they put all this money into election ads and campaigning, and and most people are like, oh god, I'm just tired. I just want to stop these fucking ads, just constant ads, um, because they're not for those people who they for, who they're for is for the undecided voter. And when you pick up a comic book and there's a recap of the past six months in the front of it, or when you turn on Raw and they do the replay again and again and again, that's not for us. That's for the person just tuning in because there's just as much focus on a potential new viewer and new consumer and new whatever than, um, than there is on the loyal viewer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Absolutely. So uh, yeah, that was from, a good discussion. Sorry, from the you, chat. Uh, from the chat, and uh, speaking oh, of yeah. other people, uh, Texas Anarchy says, uh, agreeing with me from earlier in in, in the discussion. Uh, if your local Fed keeps bringing in honky tonk, man, not so great. If Rob Conway is your world champion, not so great. Um, <laughs> yeah, if you're not depending on that and building that local talent, 
uh, you don't have much. Yeah. And, and yeah, you definitely have to build the locals. And, and, and like you said, I think, you know, there will be people that will, you will see, especially if you see like a ma- big name indie talent work with one of the local guys and it makes the local guy look like a million bucks and it makes people want to see that local guy more and more mm-hmm. and make them want to develop. Exactly. Um, so yeah, I agree completely. Yeah. So, um, Anyone who has an opinion about this, what you like in indie wrestling, what you don't like in indie wrestling, what you think, you know, people need to change, send, uh, t- contact us either on Twitter, uh, at Mayhem Show, our Facebook group, or Good Times at Good Wrestling times. Mayhem Show.com. And thank you. And tell us what you think, because we would love to know. <laughs> but yeah, uh, finally on the Indie Minute, uh, we had the interviews earlier with Riz, uh, with RJ City and Dalton Castle. Uh, fun times. Uh, including asking them uh, our big question. We actually got another uh, big-time talent uh, to uh, ask the big question to. Uh, uh, I mentioned it last week on the Indie Minute. Uh, Shine Wrestling was this past weekend, and our good friend, uh, Texas Anarchy, at Texas Anarchy, go to texasanarchy.com as well to check out his great uh, photography of wrestling shows, uh, caught up with Shine Wrestling competitor and current ACW American Josie champion, Sue Young, to ask her, the big question. Yeah. Hey, Sue Young. Oh, uh, hey. I got a question for you. Yeah, what's up? If you're a vegetable, what kind of vegetable would you be? Vegetable? Yeah, what, if you were a vegetable, what kind of vegetable would you be? I'll, be? I'll be bacon. Bacon's not a vegetable. If you were a vegetable, what kind of vegetable would you be? Oh, vegan bacon. Vegan bacon is not vegan or a vegetable or bacon. <laughs> Answer the question. Just go, okay? Yeah, it smells like asparagus. In okay, there. then you know the answer to that. Get out! Gosh! <laughs> and that, my friends, is the ending minute for this week. Thanks a lot, Eric Amen. And of course, you want more stuff that's fun like this uh, that we don't put on the air, uh, you can check us out at the Wrestling Mayhem Show Gold app. It's on your Android device, it's on your Apple device. Uh, App Store, iOS App Store, your uh, Amazon App Store on the Android devices, uh, and you can get it everywhere. Just a dollar ninety nine uh, gives you that plus access to audio version of the show, other content. Easy way to uh, remember that Twitter, remember that Facebook. Go over and post, uh, and also phone, quick access to the phone number. You don't need to remember all those numbers uh, when you want to drunk dial the show, and we do encourage that because that's very entertaining for us to get there on the weekends uh, or Tuesday afternoon if that's when you like to do that kind of thing uh so with that let's go take a little peek what's going on in gold this week as well as a little peek at rwa we were talking about them earlier and their latest dvd and uh, we'll be right back with remember when i'm hoping somebody's gonna do a buy two get one free i got a spot of oh gray hot hello Sogatron. What's the subject going to be? I don't know. <laughs> All right. Well, well, so, so basically, it's it's the big, so you say this idea hey, needs work. Bobby. What? Just, you watch your fucking mouth, Bobby. I'm I sorry. Video. Watch. <laughs> How did I miss this? This is me like the first time that the sun rose. I fade the reef, but the must have been a one show. I see the horn go. I'm not dying, ready for one more show. And then the knee breaks. I'm trying to save face. This is beautiful, never know where to place me. I've been lost for years, but it makes sense now. My man is already barely been let down. Rolled in a concrete like my whole life. Finally let go. No need to hold tight. Look by the clouds in the sky. I can see clear. I can lie, man. I'm too happy to be here. Oh my God. Damn, that looks good. I can't wait to get that DVD and add it to my DVD collection. Folks, DVDs are about one thing, and that's remembering pleasant moments. Interestingly enough, that's the point of our next segment. Remember when? I want to be remembering. Gonna look at everybody's faces. Remember, remember. So uh, there's a review, and uh, John Cena 
returned after two months um, to defeat Damien, not Damien, to, to defeat uh, what's his fuck, uh, Alberto Del Rio, and win the heavyweight title. AKA what's his fuck. AKA ADR what's his fuck. Um, mm-hmm. And then on Raw the next night, uh, uh, fucking Damien Sandow cashed in, and John Cena beat him as well. As a result, the internet has been mm, a little hard on John Cena, I think. A little negative, a little unpleasant about John Cena. And you know what? Maybe he didn't have the best match with Alberto Del Rio. Whatever. That's fine. We're not here to split, split hairs. We are. That's the point of the show, to talk about wrestling. But... I want to. I want to go down another path about John Cena. I want to remember the good times, the impressive John Cena moments. I want to talk about the greatest moments of John Cena's career. Personally, I can only. I think, I think of two. Not only two. I think of two specifically. One is the match he had with CM Punk, where CM Punk was in Chicago. The crowd was insane. And there was the if Cena wins, we, we riot signs and everything like that. That was an excellent match. It wasn't just because of the atmosphere. It was a very good match. Sorry. That was not the first time that Cena looked up and saw a if Cena wins, we riot sign. The first time that he saw that was in the Hammerstein Ballroom when he wrestled RVD at an ECW pay-per-view, and that was madness. That was I, – I have not seen a crowd ever hate Cena that much. They threw his shirt back at him. It was insane, and Cena went in there, and he did what he does, and he put on a very good match. So, yes, he's not the most electrifying person in the world. He's not – Whatever, but he can still make good memories. Sorg, tell me about John Cena. I uh, was always a big fan of old uh, rapper John Cena. Um, uh, you know, SmackDown era, really. Uh, John Cena, of course. Um, you know, uh, kind of leading up to you know his first uh, championship there with JBL, uh, and I think the epitome of that was. Uh, his rap album, which not the best, but really not a bad uh, uh, album and, and, and kind of kind of listenable. I was down with that. I was hoping I could find the, the, the Bad Bad Man video, but I actually ended up with this. I forgot there was more than one video for this. Um, but yeah, it, 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 unfortunately, I couldn't find the CD. Like that's, I don't know if it was just had that limited of a release or what. But it was John Cena saying, no, actually, yes, I am a rapper, and I don't just play one on TV. So, uh, and that was kind of like the first step of his, um, I can do anything superstardom, wasn't it? Because you got to see, like, he had won the championship. He was, uh, they did the first, well, the, the, well I guess the second, because the first custom belt was the Spinner US title. Now we have the Spinner WWE title that we had up till just recently really um you gotta think how long we had that belt you know yeah uh, like what a good seven eight years right uh that we had that crazy gaudy belt right for the wwe title and it's fun rvd was very fond of it um so yeah i that i say that album the bad bad man video i thought was a tremendous um and it was a great era for john cena before he kind of settled into uh, uh, you know, hustle, loyalty, respect that we know him as now. I miss Jersey John Cena, really. <laughs> Eamon? Uh I got one. Uh, I think a big misconception about John Cena, and it's such a sad misconception, is the fact that he can't wrestle. You heard those <laughs> chants, I think, last night, or maybe it was at the pay per view. I don't remember. Um, and it's stupid misconception because. He's even even when he's just sort of being John Cena and doing his job, he's very good at what he does. Um, I would take back even to um, I've mentioned before the SummerSlam match with him and Daniel Bryan is my favorite match of the year. Basically, not just because of whatever happened, but because of the physical wrestling involved. It was really great. Uh, but John Cena has proved time and time again that he can actually compete and, and do really well. One of another really big example of that was the big match he had on Raw with Shawn Michaels. That lasted like 
what, an hour? Oh, yeah. yeah, it was like in England. Yeah, it was really good stuff, and it was really compelling. And to his credit also, not many people can work an hour-long match and make it compelling. Mm-hmm. You, and I think a lot of people think just solely because it was an hour long, it automatically makes it a good match. No, the physical wrestling was very good in that match, and, and it's it kept your interest. And and not many people can do that. So I think John Cena uh, showcased in that you know sort of match that he deserves a bit more credit in that department. In the long run, between that, what he does for that company, what he does for charity, what he does, you know, it goes uh, above and beyond. He may not be the wrestler you want in the WWE, but he's the wrestler you deserve. Right, and he's in. He's the wrestler that he deserves to be with this much effort, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, coming back in half the time he's supposed to. He's always ridiculous with the injuries, and how has that not caught up with him? Oh, absolutely. I mean, and and I, I, maybe we'll get into it a bit later. I told people it's like people. I do like sort of the illustration. The big story is like John Cena overcoming the odds and all that stuff. But it is very impressive in general for him to come back from that injury. Like however, you know, four months before he was supposed to, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as much as people want to say whatever about it, it's very, you know, it needs to be given that respect because not many people can do that. It's not physically possible for most people to do that. Like, (laughs) so, yeah, exactly. So uh, let us know. Uh, we'll put this up again with the clip of the show and everything over on uh, Facebook and Twitter and everything. Remember when. Tell us uh, your favorite John Cena st- uh, moment. Uh, LB. Yes, sir. You want to tell me about some T-shirts? I do want to tell you about some T-shirts, Sorg. No, I, I, I can't remember the URL. <laughs> At ProWrestlingTees.com. Tell me I'm about sorry. the t-shirts, and I'll tell everybody else they can go to ProWrestlingTees.com to check out Pro that. ProWrestlingTees.com, yes! Yes, the home of the finest goddamn t-shirts anywhere in the in continental United States, ProWrestlingTees.com. You could buy, and I know it's been a dream of you for a very long time. Everyone has always thought, God, if I could just get my hands on a Wrestling Mayhem Show t-shirt. Well, now your dream can be a reality. Go to Pro com and check out our shit. It is absolutely fantastic. Wrestling Mayhem Show t-shirts. They are absolutely amazing. Property of the Mayhem Show. You know it. Tell your family who you really belong to by displaying it proudly on your chest. And while you're there, while you're there, you can go and you can find almost any other professional wrestler that you enjoy. Oh my goodness. ACH, even Goldust got t-shirts up in this bitch. And you know that if you're wearing a gold dust shirt, you're sending a message to the ladies that you know what to do with a ball gag and a golden jumpsuit. Folks, go to ProWrestlingTees.com. Do it now. Do it today. You are wasting time listening to us at work. Bring it up in the browser. You can still listen to the podcast. Open a Chrome tab, ProWrestlingTees.com. Go do it now. Excellent. Thank you, LB, for that. So let's get into it. Let's uh, bring in a, a few more people to the panel. I think they're both uh, uh, cool to stick around. We got Bobby. We got Riz uh, uh, to talk with us here. How you doing, guys? Maybe we have them. We could have Maybe. them. Yep. <laughs> I, I am glad you didn't say my pseudo name, Sorg. Your pseudo name? Uh, Rizzo? Razzo Rizzo. Razzo Rizzo. I mean, they gave you so many names in the middle. They of that, gave me so many. Names. So, so I, first we got. We so got, thank you, thank you for playing that sword. <laughs> well, he didn't blast. say not to, so I figured it was uh, it was fair game. No, 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 seriously. So you, you, I, it was it was a funny. Let's be honest. <laughs> and I think you tell me more, more sword. <laughs> tell me more. Tell me more. Uh, but no, no, no. Riz was MVP that night because uh, I, was, I, I was really just like I've been trying to get you guys to the shows. We're around wrestlers, you know. I want to help promote IWC. I think it'd be great to talk to these guys on the show and ask the questions we do. Um, so I, I and Riz showed up, and Riz, Riz went to town with it. And thanks to, I I, thanks to my lovely wife Missy for for filming as well. Uh, since we were all busy doing our our job there. Uh, so, uh, overall, we, we, we put out all the interviews, uh, in whatever other interesting segments up in the last couple of weeks. I, I, you can I'm, go find them yourself. I'm not posting them anymore. So. You're not posting them anymore? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Riz. Oh, Riz, you did a great job. Chill, buddy. 
Riz knocked a yeah. park. Riz, Riz was the man on I the did. street, man. You were good. I so, know I did. So awesome. I, and we'll we'll see what he can hear the next couple months here. Hey, December, back to court time. You ready for it? Oh, boy. Cole Cabana. See if we can get him. Oh, <laughs> if I can get Cole Cabana. Cole Cabana's going to give you a new name. Yes, he is. See what, <laughs> you can give each other a new name. So it'll be fantastic. So let's get into uh, some of our discussion tonight. Uh, I, I know I posted a couple of things. The first big news coming up. Uh, apparently, this has been going on for a while, but I guess TNA is officially on the auction block. Um, uh, what, uh, there's an update on that. There is an update on that. What's going on, Riz? It's not open for sale. They're looking at inside buyers. They're inquiring. They are looking for they're, buyers. They're, Either way, they're they looking are for, looking for buyers. Okay. They're looking for buyers within their realm. So they're not going to just say, hey, anybody's up for, up, up, for, uh, up for game here. No, Everybody's up for TNA. They have a select number of people they want. Okay. Oh, really? So they have a list of, would you like to buy us? <laughs> Yes. Um, now, is, yes. is this list accurate that I'm seeing? I'm seeing one that's Viacom, which owns Spike TV. Uh, one including Eric Bischoff, Jeff Jarrett, and WWE even being in talks. Oh, wow. I did not hear the names. Okay, I was going to say, I not know, Vince McMahon. <laughs> I don't know if that is speculation or if that is officially on 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 the table or not. I don't know. So, I, all I heard is that they have names, they have a list, and they're going to check it twice. <laughs> Santa's gonna buy TNA. Yes, Santa. <laughs> Yay, Santa! No. AKA everybody. Herschel from Walking Dead. <laughs> and then he'll get hit by Alberto Del Rio again. Well, when they have a Christmas special on Walking Dead, they're all set, right? Yeah, yeah, they are. <laughs> so, excellent. Um, hold on, sorry, fixing, fixing that toolbar thing. Thank you, new, thank you, Google, new Google Hangout. I, so <laughs> much stuff. I apologize for it glitches during the video show. Everybody online, uh, there was a new OS release this last week, and it's doing some interesting things to Wirecast. They changed Google Hangout during our podcast recording tonight, so mm -hmm. we're kind of on the fly learning the new things, like that toolbar that was popping up next to Bobby there. Uh, like right now, you're frozen, and like half the camera's frozen, and like. There's a headset that's like connecting your face. It's weird. <laughs> so <laughs> like sometimes you line up perfectly with it, and other times you don't. If you if you guys remember it's... the technical problems we would always have with the show in the past, <laughs> this is nothing, right, LB? <laughs> oh, absolutely. We are broadcasting, and people can see and hear us. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's better. Some of us like fuck it, we'll just record it. Maybe. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, anyways, but now, what do you guys think? I mean, do you? I mean, you know, this has kind of been the uh, uh, one. Uh, first of all, love the TNA, uh, the hashtag TNA yard sale the other night. Um, <laughs> that was pretty fantastic okay. on Sunday. Go check that out if you have, and you can do a search for it on Twitter. Um, but do we think a fresh owner will help, or do we look forward to a fresh owner? Or we're saying uh, it's 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 unfixable at this point. It depends on the power who the owner. Yeah, it depends on who the owner is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They should like if it have if it's Viacom. Yeah. If it's Viacom and Spike TV, we're going back to midgets jerking off in trash cans. <laughs> Not true, because that wasn't even during their era. If it's Eric Bischoff, we're I hate to say to this because he's he's a dick. But if it's Eric Bischoff. It can get better. Okay. Uh, I see. I don't know why, but I'm reversed on that. Yeah. Bischoff, from what I know, I don't know if he still has a play in the company now, but like he's he's, he's been involved. I mean, like, he's a dick. He's a douche. He's a douche. No, he's not. He's not involved right now. They sent him home. Did they? Yeah, they, yeah, they, they sent. The they sent actually. Him they actually. Sent him but they sent him home. home to, but they sent him home with like out his contract. Um. Yeah, well. I'm I, I'm with the uh, I'm with the uh, Viacom good Eric Bischoff probably not so much but I think in yeah. any case I think the problem is um, the people running the company the Carter family are uh, I don't think there's an assertion there because they are leaning yeah. on a Hogan or a Bischoff or a Russo or even a Spike TV 
I think there's too many, it's a too many cooks in the kitchen situation, kind of like what happened with WCW. Um, so I, and quite I, frankly, like the Carters, the Carters very much may not be a cook in that kitchen. Really, it's maybe they may be just funding it, and that's yeah. the thing Dixie, they want. Dixie. They, they want and maybe Dixie, maybe specifically Dixie, but like I feel like the whole like cook all these cooks in the kitchen metaphor. Like the, if you want, if you're they're gonna uh, bring in someone that could add creatively, it may just be another cook in that kitchen. It may just make it more convoluted than it already true, is. True. True. Well, they are bringing in air, uh, EC3. So. I'm hungry now. now. See, the mm. problem with the cooks in the kitchen is the fact that what they're cooking in that kitchen is uh, they're just reheating WCW leftovers. <laughs> and they, also some WWE bring not, even, not even that. Wants to do something new not, and something interesting instead of just rehashing WCW's failures, then sure. Then I think they've got a, a great opportunity but, for but, success. But Fox, they're also trying to rehash WCW's or WWE successes. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I, they need somebody to do something original. I think I'm going with Texas Anarchy in the chat room that this conversation is insulting the the kitchen cooks. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I want food now. I'm hungry. Mm. <laughs> so okay, hey, man, okay. I got fucking look here. We've got we've got some bread and butter pickles. I got a, a bag of pizza. I've got a bag goddamn of pizza. peanuts. <laughs> a bag of pizza. So, pa- some pasta salad I ate during the indie minute. <laughs> Wow! Yeah, an empty bottle of Mountain Dew. It's good times. At WrestlingMayhemShow dot com. Um, Wrestling Mayhem Either way, show. I think That's a new, I think a fresh owner will help. I think, um, I think a more assertive. Uh, 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 if Spike TV wholly owns it, I think I. I, I think that's the best thing because I think they'll have more direction with it, even if it is an <clears throat> advertising Bellator a lot show more now. Um, I, I think. Run it like a TV show, you know, and see, I and don't see think what happens Bellator with that. Staying. I, well, yeah, yeah, I know you guys were kind of talking the other night. You're like, hey, what Bellator is not sticking around? Um, so Tito Ortiz bailed. Yeah, yeah, I heard about that. Um, but I think I think the refresh will be good. I think it'll hopefully be a new era. I hope that. Well, here's the idea. We talked about this a little bit last night during the hangouts. Um, if Vince buys it. What happens? Does TNA stick around? Is TNA another thing? Is TNA just a library? We could, he, finally, I was going to say, he probably and, would just use it for the library. And we can finally it's just do the library. a complete uh, Ric Flair or Sting uh, uh, thing. What library I, is there? Because what well, what, here, what can you do other than putting a couple more matches on the next CM Punk best of? Or, or, or I don't know. You're going to use the, TNA Impact for the CM Punk best of sort? <laughs> I think oh, they could use. Yeah. Well, it was early. It was pay per views. It, it, it was like early, insubstantial yeah. matches. Uh, I can't think of anybody else other than giving guys like Sting and Hogan nowhere else to go to compete with them. You know, so they can maybe get those guys for a little cheaper and make some bank off of them. I, 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 I don't. I don't think they want Sting Hogan. I don't think they. Don't. They want Hogan. Well, they I think want they want Hogan. I don't think they want. I, I don't think I they think would mind staying. They want but Hogan. When you don't have somebody else, and you're the only game in town, and it makes it, uh, uh, the conversation about price a lot easier. I bet. Well, no, no, no. I think they'll take Hogan for as low as they're offering to him. They off. They gave him an offer that he would be making the same money in a year that Brock Lesnar would make in one appearance. Yeah. They made the offer to Hogan. I don't think they're going to be actively pursuing Hogan. And, and, and I think WWE is more realistic about we know what you're not worth. We know you're only packing 5,000 fans in those arenas. So what are you really going Did to do you, for us? And you know that we're the machine that makes you. Yeah. Did you right. not see the Hulk Hogan picture with the world title? There was that Man. when the new WWE world title yeah. was going out. Did you not see that? That's yeah. Hulk Hogan being fucking Hulk Hogan. Wow, Hulk, that's, not... And that's the big thing. That's the big thing. Fuck Hulk Hogan. The dude fucking uh, <laughs> acted like a, a petulant child for all of his career to the point where he played Vince to give him more money. Like that's that all is, he's done. That is clearly a kid who did not uh, hey, take his man. vitamins and say his that's prayers when right. he was a kid. No, I didn't grow up on Hulk Hogan. But you know what? Hey, man. This whole – this whole – yes, I know, Riz. This whole, like, Damon. I'm going to take my ball and go, go home Let thing. Go. Like, the, the, the one t- – the, when he originally wanted to go to TNA and he did that whole press conference in Japan, it was a, basically a big old, hey, look, Vince, I'm going to go to this fucking company. You need to pay me more money. 
And by the way, it looks like something very, very bad is happening between Hogan and Riz. Yeah. Right now. <laughs> 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 um, no, no, I, I'm with you. I, I, I mean, I, it's one of those don't don't ever meet your heroes things. If I ever met Hulk Hogan, I realize how much of a prick he is. You know, uh, uh, thankfully, Ric Flair. And I'm just glad that Vince is willing enough to say, "Hey, I, I'm going to pay you for this amount. If you don't want to do it, you can go wherever." And I think that's the difference. Like, like, like you got Hogan. And I think I think for the most part, we guys we still respect somebody like Ric Flair because he is when he's not super drunk, uh, super gracious. You know. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I, he really it seems humble versus Hogan just seems, and we see it on it, reality TV. He's a cash in guy. He's he's uh, he's 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 too much of a I want to say a character, but um, he's addicted to fame, you know. And but here's the thing: Does Vince want Hogan? I think we I, know Triple H wants Hogan. Yeah. Triple H said the door is open. Just come no, on. I, 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 I think, think there's a difference legends between... contract mm-hmm. so they can sell the t-shirts and the merch and put him in the video games and you know by the way he's already in they the can video make some money like, on what's left twice. of his yeah, yeah. brand it, 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 I, that, I think it, there's it. a difference though there's a difference between saying I want you and the door is open the yeah. doors like the you know there I feel like if Hogan was like fine I'll work for you they would they would work with him there's, but they um, aren't actively seeking him out. Hogan, Hogan is a guy where I think they again about that value. He's not going to make them hand over fist money. He will make them more. They he'll make them more money honestly than he makes TNA right now. Uh, again, because they're better marketers. Um, you got to think this is a company that uh, willfully signs guys like you know a Coco Beware because they're like, well, there's money to be made from Coco Beware and the nostalgia factor, and it's nice to have them there. Um, I'm trying not to just pick on Coco Beware here, um, but Sorry, uh, but versus you know the same sort of contract to Hogan, um, but they're more realistic about it. You know they're not they're the guys that said we are leaving. That's fine. We'll go make this Bret Hart guy over here. You know um, mm. there was a you know nobody's irreplaceable in WWE. Picture it. What? Picture it. Picture it. Picture January. what? January. Pittsburgh, PA. Oh, no. <laughs> Number 30 in the don't, Royal Rumble. Don't. Oh, yes. no. Don't. Oh, my God. Now, get, now don't, get my <laughs> don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Knowing this can go almost nowhere but south if it did happen. If it's number 30 in Royal Rumble, I'm sitting in my seat in the Everybody. Igloo in, 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 in Pittsburgh, PA for the Royal Rumble, and I, music hits. Mm-hmm. I will be an right. eight-year-old child that, yeah, pooping himself. Exactly. Okay, and that's what I think Absolutely. they want. That's what I think they, they want. want. They, they want, want that, that appearance, and they want that fanfare that Hulk Hogan brings. Yeah, yeah. I, When's I, the last time Hulk Hogan was in a Royal Rumble? Um, uh, Bobby, 90, that's, Bobby, that's an interesting idea, yeah. but no, ninety something. Yeah. I don't know. No, no. Eamon doesn't even want Hulk Hogan signing autographs at NXT. I don't care if he signs <laughs> autographs at NXT. I mean, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I don't see them wanting to contribute them. I don't think WWE is so into having those moments where it's like, oh my God, Hulk Hogan's here, and everyone's gonna piss themselves. And I don't think. I think they. I, I think they focus do. more you know, you nowadays. Know what they do like though. <laughs> what you know what they do like though? Makes me look like it. They like money. They yeah. do like money. Either way, it's and money. And maybe Hulk Hogan will give you know them what, money. You know what gets money? Fans. And Bob Becky. <laughs> Fans of Hulk Hogan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Would tune in in droves. I'm not saying he would not deliver Hogan. money. Dodger, I'm not saying he wouldn't deliver yeah. money. Ramp up the new but, wrestling buddies with him. Riz can get mm-hmm. a new one that doesn't have a one hole in it. One doesn't have a hole in it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also a matter of how much you would offer. Oh, that's enough of DNA. That's enough of DNA. Hell in the Cell. Is okay. it still happened? Hell. Is it? Uh, this has been this. You know, in the past when we had this it's, Hell in the Cell, and there's two Cell matches, like, oh, it's not special because you know it's coming, and we have multiples of them on a show. Uh, did this? Uh, open question. Not. T- I, I'm not putting this out one way or another uh but did this show help reiterate hell in a cell as a hellacious thing as something not to really. look forward to not really not you really you want to know why you why? want to know why? why i'll give you one of the examples as to why we have a hell in a cell match 
that's supposed to be the blow off to the CM Punk Ryback Paul Heyman feud. <laughs> And what do we have the next night on Raw? CM Punk versus Ryback in a street fight. Because that's apparently what ends the feud. Not a fucking hell in the cell. But, but it, that, no, ended, that, no. that also began. Oh, it, it ended abruptly. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no. The Hell in the Cell doesn't mean I, anything. No. I have a problem with, uh, with Hell in the Cell. Um, I... <clears throat> well, okay. First problem is I didn't see the pay per view. Um, <laughs> okay, but <laughs> but okay. So the point I was under the impression of of cage matches and also Hell in the Cell, um, and this doesn't happen all that often. But it is <clears throat> that uh, it keeps everybody out. Yeah, you know, this is the blow off. It's finally just these two people because everybody stays out, right? Yeah. And then I saw pictures and was like, oh, okay. Every goddamn person in the WWE was inside Daniel Bryan and Randy Orton's Hell in the Cell. Yep. They were fucking pe- get- No. All get right. The fuck I, out I, of here's, there. One, here's one. Go to the Hell in the Cell Wikipedia page and try to pick out. Let me know the percentage of matches where uh, somebody got in or out of the cage during mm-hmm. the match. During the match, whether they broke up with the thing, whether somebody, there's a medical thing and they open, unchained the door as, as happened. In the one match. Now, granted, the CM Punk match, uh, Heyman never got into the cage and was not required for the finish of the match. So all that was extracurricular and involved a scissor lift. Um, so I don't very, very stupid extracurricular. I don't, I don't scissor lift. No, I liked it. I think I loved it. It was a great visual. I I, I love how I love that. It was a thing. good visual. It was a very good visual. Paul Heyman is a fucking idiot. <laughs> He's a fucking idiot. <laughs> well, yes, there is that. You shut your mouth. It doesn't have to make sense or make him look like a smart person. It seems like a good idea. I'm not actually going to get in the cage. Oh, it seems like a good idea. Smartest person in the world. I think it works. The First of all, the fact works. that he had to go up in a scissor lift automatically makes it a bad idea. <laughs> He's Paul Heyman. He you really think same. Paul Heyman is going to going to going to uh, climb the cage? Are you? Are no, you he's not going to climb the cage. He was pretty much a but, cat in a tree. But because he can't climb the cage, should give the alert in his head that he also can't climb down the cage. But ideally, your guy's <laughs> going to take care of him anyways, because you have confidence in your Ryback. But it's Ryback! <laughs> Ryback ain't confident in shit! <laughs> Can I have a moment for Ryback? Ryback apparently is in a feud with the internet. Oh, yeah. yeah. You want to talk about this? I I want to talk about this a little bit. I feel bad for Ryback. Because I don't blame him for hating the internet because the internet hates him. All he gets. So I want to do this. I I don't know if I want to write a blog. Right, Eamon? I want to do a letter to Ryback. A a love letter to Ryback. Dear Ryback, sorry I'm fat and that makes me hate the stuff that you're doing. (laughs) Right back. I'm going to send you a message. I'm going to write you a letter uh, of of everything I like that you're doing. I like that you're not Skip Sheffield. Uh, I enjoyed the feed me. <laughs> I enjoyed the feed me for the feed me more. I, I'm coming to you from my own basement, my own basement, and as like TKL pointed out in the chat room, not my mom's basement. I own this basement. Or, well, at least I'm paying a mortgage on this on this uh, uh, basement, and I'm not currently behind on. So that's a, that's something. That's more than a lot of people. Um, Russell fan. Uh, it's subliminal <laughs> 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 message. Um, but but no, but but uh, I Ryback, I think is doing very well. I think uh, we get. Uh, you know, much like with the John Cena, if they're not a CM Punk, Daniel Bryan, ROH, holy shit worker. Uh, mm-hmm. But Ryback mm-hmm. is the Goldberg of this era. And every... No, uh, no. Oh, what? my God. No? He is not Goldberg. He no. is not Goldberg. No, I'm not saying he's exactly he, Goldberg, he, but he's the He's big... lost every fucking match. He's the big... Everything. No, Il Goldberg lost a lot of matches after that Taser incident. The, he was the, never the, the same again. The comparisons now between Ryback and Goldberg is that no. he's muscly no. and he's wait, bald. Wait, 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 wait. I'm not done. I'm not done. Uh, 
He's the Goldberg. He's the Hercules Hernandez. He's the uh, pow power and glory. He's the he's the muscle he's the guy, wall, brother. He's the warlord. He's the Meng. That's what he is right now, and that's the purpose he serves. He doesn't have to be an amazing wrestler, and we know that WWE is more Sorry. about yes. There's My problem is not with his wrestling. His wrestling is fine. It's not entirely entertaining, but it's fine. He he looks like someone that could. <laughs> I don't know what you put like, that. It's just okay. It's fine. No, no, no. I'm, Listen, he looks like someone. He looks like someone that could put together a wrestling match, and that's fine. My problem is he is being booked, and I I hate like shitting on booking, but he is being booked garbagely. If you want to talk about someone being buried, Ryback has been buried. He's been buried? Deep I yeah. In the ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have to agree with Eamon on that. I think he's a utility at this point. I. No, I think most the, people on he that He lost roster last utility. night in five he minutes. Was, he lost the hell in the cell. He lost that battleground by being kicked in the dick. Mm -hmm. well, that's a good and reason. We, we, and and let's finisher. go back even further than I've that. I've lost plenty of things by getting kicked in the yeah. dick, okay? Pride. Pride. Let's go even further than that. Pride, How? yes. Cat piss and Vicodin. <laughs> <laughs> That's my catchphrase. And there's our show title. <laughs> uh, but no, seriously, we, we, we have to go back to last year at the Royal Rumble. And how nonchalantly he gets thrown out at the final, like, as, as John Cena wins the match. I think the only match, only pay-per-view match he's won this year against was against Chris Jericho, and it was on a roll-up. Because he's the bat, he's the big guy. At least it wasn't fruit. Really. That's a weird one. He's a big guy. Yeah, when was when was the last time Mark Henry won a nice big high profile match? But he's still uh, fucking popular. I'll tell you against Ryback at WrestleMania. <laughs> <laughs> there, you go. there you go. Mark Henry, Big Show. These guys are huge because they're spectacles, but they're not necessarily interesting. They're there to be huge. Challenge the little guys, and then the little yeah. guys overcome the odds. Great callie. But Big Show... Big show yeah. No, no, no. But Big They're Show gets win. wins every once in a while, and Big Show still does very interesting stuff. Big Show well, is a wins head. every once in a while, but they're not there to win. They're there to be overcome. Big Show's the only big guy that actually wins matches. Like, all the time. Really? Not really? Not, not really? the only big really? guy, but he's like one of the only ones. No, no, Big Show's, Big Show's usually the guy that is, again, guy to be overcome. He's the one that the little guy ends up winning over to, mm. you know, uh, the, I mean, he the was big just guys have the worst records. For, What's that? He, he was manipulated for months mm -hmm. because yes. he didn't have any money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if he, anything, Big Show's the one that's overcoming My stuff. point has been taken away. Yeah, for, for, for a change. You know, um, I would think pretty often. Remember when he feuded with like Cody Rhodes? It wasn't that Cody Rhodes was the underdog. It was that Big Show never won a match at Mania. Yeah. And he was the fucking underdog in that storyline. They constantly make Big Show the underdog. Yeah. Man. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what about anything else? Hell in a Cell. Uh, with the Cell matches we touched on. Are we content with this closure of sorts? Uh, to the Daniel Bryan Randy Orton situation. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, mm, yeah. I, I think from what I saw on Monday. Yeah, Raw helped it a from, lot. Yeah. From what I saw on Monday, I am I'm perfectly fine with what happened with uh, both CM Punk and Daniel Bryan. Okay. Yeah. Because they have stuff to do. Yeah, and, and it's yeah. okay that they're not in the title picture. They'll come back. Yeah. You know they'll come back. Yeah. They just did an amazing thing. Everything's a cycle. Everybody goes a cool off period. Um, I mean, uh, I don't think the situation with Sandow and Cena's over. For instance, mm -hmm. I know somebody pointed out Del Rio has a title. I think you'll see a few rematches, a few interesting things happen on SmackDown between Sandow and Cena. Uh, you know, I wouldn't mind Survivor Series ending up being a triple threat match for the title between those guys. I think that would be amazing. Um, as I pointed out again in the Hangout, Sandow has already had a, a match or two with Del Rio. Uh, so I think there's something to go with that, you know? I think so, yeah. So, 
Uh, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, any other last uh, thoughts? Anything else on uh, Hell in a Cell that got you guys going? Um, let's see. Tag Team Wrestling is alive and well. Oh, my God. Yeah, I know you guys were nuts mm -hmm. for that. There's Tag Team Wrestling and the Divas. Yeah. Yeah, let's talk about the Divas. Let's talk about how, how finally people got to saw how actually really good Summer Rae is. Yeah, She's yeah. Really good. Uh, I, I, we talked about this on the on the Raw uh, wrap up hangout last night. You can check that out on the YouTube page and at WrestlingMayhemShow dot com. Um, but the two things that have been lacking that we usually went to TNA for, which is so bad now in TNA, but it really a lot is uh, pretty abysmal there. Um, tag team wrestling and women, and now there's a little bit of forefront. There's good matches happening. Um, I, don't, I don't think the women are entirely there, but you're having people. Break out, and you're having people showcase what they can do, like a Summer Rae, like a Brie Bella, um, you know, getting getting Either at way. least more opportunity and showing that they're improving is the thing. Mm -hmm. exactly. So yeah, they're getting also, they're also getting Summer Rae. Summer yeah. Rae is legit proof that if you actually work at the Performance Center, Eva Marie, you can actually get good at wrestling. There you go. <laughs> Oh, did Amy just throw the gauntlet at Eva Marie? Did you, did you Eva Marie, just throw it. Oh no, you didn't at Eva Marie. Yeah, it's whatever. not her fault. She can't. She can't properly wow. wear her singlet. No, no she, put it, <laughs> she did put it on backwards. That was a little confusing. poor girl put it on backwards. All right, guys. Well, I think we're going a little long tonight. Let's uh, uh, go and wrap it up. Tell me, what did you learn from wrestling tonight or today, Eamon? Or this week? This week? <laughs> or specifically that today? Um, okay. What did I learn today? Huh. Man, it was a damn. I'll tell you what I learned. Uh, I learned, yeah, go back I learned go that back scissor me. lift operators do not work good under pressure on being on TV. <laughs> no. It was a little bit awkward. A little bit awkward. Because uh, if you drop Paul Heyman, you lose the job. That's right. Uh, or you get promoted. That that depends how uh, you think that works. Uh, uh, what about you, LB? Oh, yes, you know. I learned – okay, yeah, here's something. I learned that um, in this uh, in this big uh, world championship thing, there's a lot of moving parts and a lot of different players and a lot of people have a lot of different lines. You get the big show. You got Triple H. Uh, and you know who I've thought the absolute least about is uh, Randy Orton. <laughs> he's. It, it seems like even though he's got the world heavyweight title, he is absolutely <laughs> lost in the shuffle. Because he's Randy he, Orton. He is so secondary yeah. to the situation with uh, the, the authority, isn't he? I mean, he's really, yeah, he's, he's just really there. just a henchman at this point. But that's all right. I think it's a different role for him to play. Right? Uh, what about you, yeah. Bobby? Oh, wait. Oh, oh there was yeah, one other thing. I'm sorry. This one's even actually better. Um, I learned that they are totally fine with wasting... Ray Mysterio's big return on being an announcer. <laughs> can, can I point out the Why point the fuck where not? JBL and what well, I think Bobby said that he was stealing his material. Where yeah, JBL was. still insisted that that was Ray Mysterio in the El Torito mat, uh, to get up, even though Ray Mysterio was right beside him at the Spanish announce table. That was a fake Ray Mysterio. That was a fake Ray Mysterio. Olé. Yes, Ole, <laughs> Bobby. All fairness, he stole. He stole the internet's material. <laughs> exactly. Bobby. Everybody said that. Um, Bobby. I, I, I learned that uh, they, WWE needs to capitalize and make a new t-shirt for Damian Sandow that says, Rise Above This. And also that um, Bob Backlund needs to be the manager for uh, primetime players. <laughs> Yes, that would be hot. <laughs> but he, he 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 was backstage with them at uh, Hell in a Cell. Yeah, and they did the millions of dollar dance. Yes, <laughs> that was wonderful. Uh, Amen. I learned that Shawn Michaels has super rubber legs. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh my God! Yes. Legs. Do they have that picture on their website? Old uh, Hold on, I'll, I'll try to see if they have it on there. Yeah, if you watch Hell in the Cell, Shawn Michaels' uh, Sweet Chin music totally connected with Daniel Bryan. Uh, and they didn't have to do any retouching on the photos afterwards whatsoever. Nope. 
Shawn nope. Michaels' legs are just that long. Shawn, nope. Michaels, Shawn became, Michaels is Mr. Fantastic. Yeah, he, he became Mr. Fantastic for like three seconds. Awesome. Uh, uh, what about you there, uh, Riz? I learned in the same light of you, Sorg, I learned that JBL under extreme pressure and depression didn't even get through the racist comments on Raw when El Torito and Los Matadors came out because he was concerned about Daniel Bryan. Yep. Every time, every, every time the Los Matadors comes out, who gets a giant boner for Zed those two masked men and Zed his bowl? Mr. JBL. <laughs> and after he saw the two, after he saw the Wyatt family beat up Daniel Bryan, there was no cheering in JBL's corner. So Only sad. sadness. Only sadness. Only sadness. Maggle. <laughs> Guys. Maggle. Wrestling. Oh, hey, and Sword. also, I'm sorry. We yeah, already said something. Texas Anarchy says he learned that oh, yeah, Bobby yeah, yeah, Fish yeah. and Sue Young would be an asparagus tonight. Interesting coincidence. Yep. Um, guys, Wrestling Mayhem Show. Check us out. WrestlingMayhemShow.com, iTunes, Stitcher, YouTubes, uh, Blue app. TV on the app. The Red WMS Gold app. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. 412-206-WMS0. We're here live every Tuesday at live.sorgatronmedia.com. Angry Birds Star Wars. About 9 p.m. Eastern. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> That's a different podcast. That's a different show. Yeah. Well, guys, for the chat room, everybody's been awesome tonight. Uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show. Out. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait.